What we're going to be going over here is the book value per share of stock and that's the equity value per share of stock and we're going to be looking at the effect here that preferred stock is going to have on common stocks book value here. And for example here, Corporation A has the following stock outstanding and retained earnings. For preferred stock, there are 4,000 shares outstanding, $100 par value, and there's going to be a 6% dividend rate on the preferred stock. Common stock, 10,000 shares outstanding at a $50 par value, and then the common stock's additional paid in capital is $300,000. And then in our retained earnings, we have 200000 here. And what we're going to be looking at here is we're, there are 140000 of the uh, $200,000 in retained earnings is going to be paid out in dividends here for this example. And then also we have preferred stock that has two years of dividends that's in arrears that haven't been paid yet. Okay, so this is what we're going to be looking at is how do we calculate the book value per share of common stock? And what has to be done here is that this is the key. Or you must allocate the retained earnings between the preferred stock here and the common stock. So what we have here, we're going to have have this equation here. Where we're, this is our general equation here for the book value per share of stock. We're going to have the common stock shareholders equity divided by the number of common stock shares outstanding. In the common stock shareholders equity here, that's equal to the common stock's par value plus the common stock's additional paid in capital plus the uh, portion of retained earnings that the common stock is receiving here. Okay, so we're going to be looking at two different cases here. and we're uh, One where we're going where the uh, preferred stock is going to actually affect the common stock's uh, book value here or per share value and then we're going to look at the uh, case where it will start out here where it doesn't affect the book value just as our basis here. So for case one and there's going to be no dividends and arrears here in the preferred stock and it's not participating. So this is the, our base here where we're not going to have any dividends in arrears on the preferred stock and the current year dividends are not paid out yet. Okay so what do we have to do in this case here, we're going to have to break it down here, our preferred stock and our common stock. We have to break down the shareholders equity, the portion uh, each has in shareholders equity, and then the portion that uh, is assigned here to retain earnings for both uh, sh uh, different stocks here. And then looking at the total amount here, we'll be able, and the shares outstanding, we're going to be able to determine the book value per share of, of common stock in this case. So starting out with our shareholders equity, and we'll just, uh, for our preferred stock, we have 4,000 shares outstanding, $100 par value here, so there's 400,000 here assigned to the preferred stock. Common stock, 10,000 shares outstanding at a $50 par value, so we have $500,000 here uh, for our common stock shareholders equity. And then for a common stock additional paid in capital, there's going to be $300,000. Okay, so this is the key here. We move down to our retained earnings here. Since um, I've heard stock here, it's non-participating and we didn't pay any, um, there's no dividends and arrears here and we haven't paid out the dividends yet for the year here for either the preferred stock or the common stock. So what is going on here is the common stock gets the total retained earnings here of 200000 Total amount and retained earnings, 200000 So totaling our amounts here, uh, the preferred stock here is going to have a total amount here of 400000 and our common stock here is going to have a total amount here of shareholders equity plus the return earnings of 500000 300000 and the 200000 here in retained earnings. Total amount is $1 million. So now the book value per share, easy enough to calculate. Shares outstanding, 10,000 shares outstanding and we have a total amount here of a common stock shareholders equity of a million dollars so we're going to have the book value per share here at one hundred dollars so there it is one million here in total common stock shareholders equity divided by the total number of shares outstanding equals one hundred dollars per share okay so we've taken this uh, first ex case one here where preferred stock really had a little or no effect here on our common stocks uh, equity here and the retained earnings here now let's look at the second case here. Okay, let's look at case two here. And I'm only using this as an example here, uh, just to show that how preferred stock here can affect your common stocks, dividends that is paid out, and the retained earnings. And we'll just look at here uh, based on a like percentage here. So where the preferred stock is participating in and dividends are allocated based on a like percentage, um, 
we're going to have a current year dividends. Again, the current year dividends are not paid out. So what we're going to do is we're going to calculate our dividends here for a preferred stock and our common stock. Again, this is only an example here on how you, uh, when you run into the case here where you have to start allocating dividends between your preferred stock and your common stock and how it affects the common stock. So first off here, starting with our preferred stock, we had uh, the dividends in arrears two years six percent preferred times the uh, par value of four thousand shares a hundred dollar par we're going to preferred stock is going to be allocated forty eight thousand dollars here and remember preferred stock gets paid before the common stock and um, secondly here for the preferred stock for the current year again we have the four thousand shares hundred dollar par six percent here for one year twenty four thousand here for the um, uh, for the current year's dividends here and now our common stock that's just we're using this here just based on a like percentage here of the preferred stock six percent here times ten thousand shares outstanding fifty dollar par common stock is allocated dividends here of thirty thousand dollars okay so what we have here uh, we have to determine um, the remainder of the dividends that has to be allocated between our preferred stock and our common stock Remember, our total dividend payout here is $140,000. We've already allocated based on the a stated percentage here and that like kind percentage for the common stock. Uh, th the amount that we allocated here was already done here, 48000 24000 30000 So what we're going to have to do here is of the total 140000 that are going to be paid out in dividends, uh, the remainder, remaining, remainder here is going to be 38,000. Simply the divid a difference here between what was already paid out and the dividends that were declared and were have to be paid out. So here we're just going to do it on a pro rata basis in this in this example here. And that's typically what you would be doing here in allocating between preferred stock and common stock. So to do compute our participating amount here, we just take for our preferred stock our total par value for preferred stock we can move down here and look at that so that was what we had already calculated here at 400,000 for the preferred stocks par value and then we take the and then well let's look at the common stock and that's the common stocks par value was 500,000 here that's what we had calculated before here now we just take and then we have to determine the total par value here for preferred stock and uh, and the common stock add those together 400,000 here plus the 500,000 we come up with 900,000 so uh, for our participating amount here for a preferred stock we'd allocate it here total par value of preferred stock divided by the total par for both the preferred and the common times that 38,000 here that we have to remaining amount here that has to be allocated on the pro rata basis that comes up to $16,888 for the preferred stock same for the common common stock just take its total par value a par, par total par value for the common stock divided by the total par for both common and preferred times that amount of a remain uh, remaining dividend here that has to be allocated 38,000 we come up with 21,102 dollars here so we've allocated a total 38,000 remaining dividend here that had to be divided up between the preferred stock and the common stock and the idea was here just to go through the uh, example here that preferred stock is typically going to get some amount of any dividend here after the de de uh, speci specified declared amount and, and it's going to be split between the preferred stock and the common stock any remaining dividends here so that's for our example here on how the preferred stock can affect a common stock so we know our total dividends here for both our preferred stock here and our common stock we can add those up here and those total equal our total dividends that's paid out. Okay, so now let's go down and look at how we calculate our per share uh, common stocks um, book value per share here. So this is how, again, we lay it out in this fashion here. We got our preferred and our common stock and we have our shareholders equity here and then we're going to have it break, or our retained earnings are going to be broken out here and how we assigned our retained earnings based on that dividend that was paid out here. And then we'll take a look at the total amount here and come up with the book value per share. So for our shareholders equity, that's the same as we had here, originally looked at here. That was the preferred stock had a $400,000 uh, par value here, total par value. Common stock had 500000 
par value here, plus there was $300,000 additional paid in capital for a common stock. So now we come down to our retained earnings here, and this is how we would split this up. So remember the preferred stock got those two years in arrear here for 48000 plus the current year uh, dividend here at 24000 and then the common stock had the current year dividend here at 30000 Okay. And now we had that remain how that remaining dividend was split up. Sixteen thousand went to sixteen thousand eight hundred eighty-eight went to our preferred stock here, and our common stock got the uh, twenty-one thousand one hundred and two dollars. So that that's how we split up that remaining dividend. Somehow you have to split up your dividends here in some fashion, and we just you did it on that like percentage. Now this is the key here. The remaining remaining div uh, remaining retained earnings here based on the payout of the dividend goes to the common stock here. Now you can see that here. You had retained earnings total of 200,000 here uh, that was sitting in retained earnings when we started out. We paid out, we were, had to calculate out the dividend here that was being paid 140,000. So you re reduce your, your retained earnings are being reduced here from 200,000 subtract out the dividend that's being paid out here for both the preferred stock and a common stock, you come up with $60,000 here. And that's all being assigned to the common stock. So here, that's the key here. Remember, we had to allocate our di remaining dividends here between the preferred stock and our common stock when we did our calculation. But we also have to allocate the um, remaining retained earnings here. And when we allocate that, everything goes to the common stock. So if we total everything up here for a preferred stock, for our stockholders' equity and retained earnings here. Total amount here for preferred stock is $488,888. Do the same here for a common stock. Total everything up. And um, for our retained earnings, shareholders' equity, we come up with $911,102. Now, we know the shares that are outstanding here at $10,000. So we divide those, uh, those shares outstanding into the total um, common stock equity here. Let's just go down and look at that here. That was our uh, par amount here. We had our par amount up here plus our additional paid in capital here for a common stock of 300,000. Let's just go back here. Par amount here uh, was 500,000 here. Uh, uh, additional paid in capital for our common stock was 300,000 here plus those retained earnings here. And that retained earning was based on here uh, the fact that we only had six, all of it, whatever was paid out in the dividends here got um, put into the, or subtract, uh, got transferred over here to the common stock retained earnings. Plus, we also had the dividend portion that was assigned here to our common stock. That's also included in our retained earnings here. So we come up with our total amount here of $911,112. That's the common stock equity here. So going back to our equation here, common stock shareholders equity divided by the number of shares outstanding. That was that 911112 here for our common stock common shares outstanding here, 10,000 shares here. That gives us our book value per share here at $91.11. And again, this is uh, calculated before any dividends are paid out. We just allocated our dividends here and that's what it would determine, what our common stock would get here, $91.11 $91 per share here. Now remember, when we started our example here and we didn't, allo we didn't have any preferred stock dividends that were paid here, then we were able to come up with, it was $100 per share because everything was based off the common stocks uh, shareholders equity here and the common stock got total amount of retained earnings here. And that gave us a higher book value here when the preferred stock wasn't included here. But now when we include the preferred stock for the dividends that it would have to be paid and any allocation here between uh, the preferred stock and the common stock on any remaining dividends, how it was allocated, um, then that reduced here our common stock uh, shareholders equity by the amount here of the dividends that the preferred stock was being paid and any uh, allocation of any dividends here between the preferred stock and the common stock. But the other key thing is here, just remember here, when after you calculate all your dividends and allocate them here for your preferred stock here and your common stock, you, if you have any retained earnings left over, it all flows into the common stock. And then 
that's how you determine your equity here on your, for your common stock. Just add up your shareholders equity, your par amount here for your common stock plus your additional paid in capital and then any in this case any dividends that were would be received here for the common stock plus any balance here in retained earnings for your common stock that would equal your total shareholders equity then you take that total shareholders equity by the shares outstanding here and you're going to get the uh, divide that in uh, the shares outstanding into total shareholders equity you get your book value per share on that basis okay so that sums it up here when you're dealing with your preferred stock here and your common stock on how you're trying to determine your book value per share